Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, beautiful people, welcome back to Let's Learn StarCraft, where we just got done in real time talking about all these various techniques for mouse and keyboard control to help you optimally manage your base and manage your armies. And in this, we're going to be doing an extension of that, where we look at each race, Zerg, Terran, and Protoss, in not that order at all, we're actually going to go Terran, Protoss, Zerg. And we're going to talk about how to specifically use some of these hotkey and mouse and keyboard learnings for the, that particular race. I want to note two things right away. One, everything that I'm about to say is a suggestion. Pretty much everything I'm giving to you in this series is me sharing with you how the game works and how it is, right? I've been doing this for 20 years. I love this game. I'm obsessed with it. I know how shit works. Except this is much more of a suggestion, because this episode is about organizational techniques. And feel free to organize however you want. For example, if you want 1, 2, 3, and 4 to be your units, 5, 6, 7, 8 to be your buildings, and 0 and 9 to be something extra like scanner, great. If you want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to be your buildings, and 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 to be your units, great. You get to do that. The, everything I'm saying is just suggestion in this particular episode. Second thing, it would not surprise me if after everything I said in the last episode, you were like, oh my god, I need to play some games here, man. Please play a lot of games and rewatch this episode and rewatch the last episode about mouse and keyboard tricks because this is going to take a lot of time to sink in. This is how you physically use your mouse and keyboard to organize. And that is perhaps the biggest battle in all of StarCraft, is how do you properly organize everything? I will now drink water, because how can a man properly hydrate without drinking water? How is this even possible? Ah, oh, excellent. Okay, we're gonna break this into three chunks for each race. Early game, mid game, Late game. What are the differences between those? Early game. In terms of how the game works, it's very micro intensive and thin timing intensive. Being good at building stuff at just the right time, not missing a beat, that's the difference between having three dragoons for the attack versus four dragoons for the attack. AKA 33% more army. I almost said 25% because I always screw up math on air. But that's the early game, getting things very precise with your timings and getting things very precise with your unit control because losing a unit here or there is very, very bad. So that's our early game. Our second, our mid game is going to be all about trying to manage some army and some base with a couple key timings in there. If we maybe whiff a marine production here or there, that's less important in the mid game than if we were to say, with the next thing in our build order or with worker production um, and the end game it's really about managing large amounts of army and lots and lots of space so we're going to talk about those starting with Terran Woo! okay so first of all let's go ahead and do our usual cheater cheater pumpkin eater things Let's take a look at an early game Terran base. It doesn't really matter as much what specific matchup this is because you're gonna see the lessons pan out pretty, pretty clearly, pretty quickly. Here are some common buildings to have in the early game as Terran. This looks pretty common. In the early game, you'll generally have one expansion. You'll have some number of production structures. You might have an upgrader. How might we organize these? Well, first of all, certainly this guy is gonna be on F2. This expansion is gonna be on F3. These are the most common uses for the screen hotkeys because it's so normal to say, build defensive structure, Come out here, build a turret, F3, shift, clip. Come up here, you guys, build a turret, build a turret, F, F2, shift, click. 
So F2 and F3 are very, very commonly on the main base. Or I should say on expansions. This is true for all three races. I'm still going to be redundant and mention it. But F2 and F3 pretty much are worker lines. Why? Well, if you hit F2 to come over here, oh shit, what if I'm being reaver dropped? Oh no, what if he's killed off all of my turrets with mutalisks? Box, F3, click. F2, box, F3, click. F2, box, F3, click. Run, 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 run. By the way, I'm going to interrupt myself. I forgot to note something because we weren't really under attack. If you're ever receiving a signal from the game, you're under attack. Unit just finished. You must construct additional supply depots. If any of that happened, you hit space bar and it just goes there. Another way to achieve this, stupidly, is clicking on the portrait. Clicking on the portrait will either center you on the building or it will go to the last thing that happened. So notice I'm building this. Do you see? This, don't even use this. Don't even, don't even use this. Clicking the portrait does not necessarily go to the thing that you're looking at. It goes to the thing that you have selected or it goes to the last action. It's just, it's stupid. It's a stupid bug. Don't even worry about it, okay? Look at this. Again, I'm going to build the factory. If I click, it centers the factory. But if I build an SCV and it finishes, it go, goes to the last command. Doesn't matter. Okay. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Let's take a step back. What the hell are we doing? We're talking about hotkey setups and uh, various other base setups, right? So F2, F3. Oh my god, he's attacking here. Let me... F3, box. F2, click. F3, box. F2, click. F3, box. F2, click. All right? This is very common use of screen hotkeys. Okay? Now... Early game, you can be kind of fast and loose with your hotkeys. You can be like, you know what, this command center, this is control 3. This command center is control 4. And that way I'm going to use 3S and 4S to just constantly monitor my production. Very common also to have every single um, production thing hotkeyed. You have a lot of barracks? No problem. Hockey every single one of those puppies. I really recommend going to town with production hockeys early game. So you have like five, six, seven as your barracks, three and four as your command centers. Oh, it's great. This is beautiful. So let's build some marines then. Let's get these puppies out. The Really the important thing to do in the early game is to ensure that you are creating a smart organizational structure for yourself that touches on pretty much everything that you would need. Using control 1 and 2 is really common for units because the A button for attack, or is it it's over there, attack, it's right next to 1 and 2. Super straightforward, super basic. Oh, why do I have 3, 4, 5, and 6 as my production structures? Because they're just after 1 and 2. Now, what some people do is they don't have 3 and 4 as the command centers. They just use F2 and F3. I talked about this in the last... Uh, actually, a few times. Now, five, six, seven are still these production structures. Okay. Well, what else could we use three and four for? Hmm. You know what sounds good? Having four as our engineering bay. That way, as we're playing the game, we can just check on stuff. I have control one is some marines, control two is some more marines. I have F2 and F3 in order to continuously build SCVs. Great. Looks good, doesn't it? Looks good. 
Oh, got some medics. These are control three, right? F2 click, F3 click, right? So far, so good, right? Oops, got to add him in. And then I tap four. This lets me know what my timing is. Anything important that I'm worried about, put on four. You know what sometimes other people like to do? They like to put this on a high-end hotkey like eight, something that they don't actually use that much. They'll use four, five, and six as these. Four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. F2, S, click. F3, S, click. But what's eight? Eight is that engineering bay. I want you to see the logic in that. The, whoops. There's Blizzard Entertainment makes StarCraft, by the way. <laughs> um, Why are the units on 1, 2, and 3? Because I use them the most, and they're right next to A. Why do I have buildings on 4, 5, 6, 7? Because that's still relatively close to the left side of the keyboard, and I want to make sure that I can select everything. Why, then, would I put my upgrader on 8? Because I never really need to twitch action, go to the upgrade facility. Just every now and again. Do you see how there's an internal logic here? It's less use on the left, and or excuse me, more use on the left and increasingly less use as you go to the right. What else? Kralak says, why does he have that on the screen? Do we have a special reveal coming? I just made a video about the fact that I'm in the StarCraft II announcer! Woo! So I was using that to make a video. Holy shit, I just got fucking Dark Templar rushed. <laughs> I don't believe this shit, man. Die. Die, die, die. I'm not gonna go out to some Dark Templar. No, fuck no. Get out of my game. Okay. So you heard me state this logic of your more frequently used hotkeys are at the low end because it's much easier to 1A, 2A, 3A. And the things that you click, that you click less, such as your barracks, are on 4, 5, and 6. The most common place for the commsats is on 0 and 9. And this is an interesting thing to talk about because logically this is consistent with the idea that the lesser used things are on the right and the more frequently used things are on the left. Um, but you'll notice that 0s might be inconvenient for you to 0s scan like there, 0s scan like there. For me, I have huge hands, it's no problem. But maybe for you, you're just like, man, scanner sweep really sucks. Feel free to make scanner sweep P on your custom hotkeys. So that way you go 0P click, 0P, or 9P click. Things like this. So that's basically the early game. You can use your units on 1, 2, and 3. Your building's on 4, 5, and 6. But make sure that you are keeping maybe some extra hotkeys available for upgrades. Because maybe you have some timings built around that. I know some people that do this where they'll have a worker that literally is on supply depot duty. And that worker will be on 8. So they'll just move over here and come over here and just build another supply depot. They won't even ever send him home. They'll just build another depot, go around, do stuff, 8-8 build another depot. Think of problems that you have when you're playing and try to solve them with these hotkeys. Yeah? Good. Alright. I want to talk a little bit about um, if you have some unique units that are in the mix. Be serious with this shit. I gotta get an empty map for this. something that commonly happens to people 
they'll wind up with a few different types of units, such as uh, in TVP, sometimes you'll have something like a handful of marines. You'll have some tanks. You'll have some vultures. You'll have a dropship. You'll even have a scouting SCV. Any arrangement that you want to do of these technically is okay, but I recommend you start thinking about reserved hotkeys. Here is an example of another Terran player's setup that involves some reserved hotkeys. F2 and F3 are always on these. Buildings start at 5. So this is 5, this is 6, this is 7. But 4 is for whatever is doing something different than sitting with a main army. So maybe these tanks are control 1, these vultures are control 2, but he uses this dropship over on 4. And 4 is always the active harasser. Now, think about the logic of that. It's the active harasser. So what if I wasn't making a dropship, but I did want just these three vultures to be harassing and the rest of my vultures to not be harassing? I would have these vultures as four. So we still have, like, one, two, and three. We still have our main army on one, two, and three, but the harassers are always on four. This is a slightly different logic than the last setup that we just talked about, which was highest use on the left, lowest use on the right. This is... Hotkey 4 has an identity in the early game, and it's for harassers. Alright. Seems pretty reasonable, yeah. So, one thing that changes slightly when you get to mid-game is Terran. We've talked a lot about early game and some of the mid-game concepts. Something that's really common to happen in mid-game with all the races, and in this case Terran, is you wind up with, you kind of run out of hockeys. So you have to figure out where you want to assign your various keys. Super common, zero is scan, nine is scan, and you know what? Eight is also scan. What's this? F4. So we still have F2, F3, F4. All right, this is still really commonly used. But then, since we have zero, nine, and eight being reserved for scans, we'll also have many more control groups of units, most commonly four or five, Here's, here's three control groups, and let's assume that this is a fourth, right? You only really have five, six, and seven as the available hotkeys. So what do you do? What do you do about this? It's okay to have a different definition for what everything does in mid-game. And it's, it's super damn common. Like, here is a common mid-game setup. One, two, three, four is units. Zero, nine, eight are scan. And then there's one hotkey that is for production. So this might be on five. So I go one, two, three, four, five, things like this. You know what's also super important? Upgrades. Come on, get the hell out of there. Upgrades. An armory. I know a lot of people that have this as seven, actually. Not a lot, but there there exists Terran. I haven't, I haven't done a full mapping of all the Terrans in the world, because again, a lot of people have different setups, but again, this solves a lot of the mid-game problems. I have a huge army, well I have one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, you know what, my god, I actually have so many units that I'm at five. I have one to five as units, one, two, three, four, five. But now I can go back to six, to macro, and I can check on my upgrade production with 7. It's another nice internal logic. Um, for late game, 
very often it just comes down to one hotkey available for buildings or one screen hotkey available because you have so many command centers and you want all those commsats available because it's commsats wind up being much of a tactical use as the game goes on so being able to have those quickly at hand is very nice is very convenient to talk slightly about some specific organization of uh, units, because we've talked a lot about the intersection of units and buildings and just vague things about units, but let's go ahead and talk about those. It's very common in Terran to have control groups split by unit type because they have these active abilities. This is not as common with like Marines and Fire Bats. Often you'll have Marines and Fire Bats in the same group because they both use STEM and they kind of are meant to go together and they kind of do the same thing. These units and these units, they just do different things in the battle. And so having one be the tanks and two be the vultures as separate things is totally reasonable. Now I just want to know, flip the the order. Why would we not want vultures as one and tanks as two? Just think for a moment. Why not? And I do want you to stop and ask yourself these sorts of questions like, hmm, because this is how hotkey setups come up. No one plans their hotkeys within a game. They go, you know what, before I go into this game, I'm going to try to use zero to be my dropship harass. That's what I do. My, my harassing things are often on zero. Defilers, that sort of thing. A big reason that we don't actually want these vultures to be on one and these tanks to be on two is that vultures we know are in a higher number and so it's weird when i get more vultures and i need another hotkey that now i have one and three as vultures yuck one and three as vultures and tanks as two uh. the units that wind up in higher numbers you want to plan blocks for so you would say something like Vultures are going to be three, four, and five. Three, four, and five are vultures. Tanks are one and two. Great. You have a slight weirdness because you're hopping over two, but maybe you're more comfortable with that. Um, I believe the select, the StarCraft II player, I think he just never used two. He just didn't use two on his keyboard, period. He didn't use it at all. He didn't use it. Very successful player. Jadong doesn't use eight, nine, and zero. He, he doesn't. He does not use those buttons in the slightest. He only hotkeys four hatcheries in his game. Jadon does four, five, six, seven. And he just quits. He just gives up. Um, so yeah. That is, that's basically it regarding Terran and also a lot of the races. You just want to do logical groupings in that regard. So let's do Protoss. Uh, Protoss is going to have a ton of similarities to Terran. Just a whole crap load. F2 here. F2 on the base. F3 over here. It seems good. Alright. Shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary. There's something important to note about how the different matchups function for Protoss, because Protoss is slightly different than the other races. Well, all the races are different from each other, who am I kidding? It's very common for Zealots and Dragoons to live in the exact same hockey. So often you'll see a player who has a whole bunch of Zealots and Dragoons and will have one group over here, another group over here, and then in this way he has a sort of nice mixture of units just by virtue of how he has set up his hotkeys. So, for instance, in Zerg or in Protoss versus Terran, there's Protoss players who want to make sure that they have the Zealots coming in from all sides. 
And so having a spread like this is really nice. Deliberately chunking these together. So you can go 1A, 2A, and now you have a nice spread of Dragoons, a nice spread of Zealots. Very often, also, and this is going to sound crazy, Protoss players will put Templar right in the control groups with the Zealots and the Dragoons. Especially against Zerg. Because the, the, one of the interesting things about Protoss is that they very often have the widest spread of unit types compared to the other races. You'll have Zealots and Dragoons and Shuttles and Templar and Reavers and Corsairs. <laughs> oh. And so it's, it's not uncommon to have something like this where you just send everything in together. So you go 1A click, 2A click, and then you just select the Templar because they move slow enough that they're easy to select. Do you see how this is just suggestion, not rules? This is how I hotkey my, my stuff when I'm Protoss and I'm against Zerg. When I'm against Terran, I really like my Dragoons to be in their own control group so I can actively move them around and manage to pick off all sorts of mines and all that good stuff. And then I have my Zealots at the back side ready to pounce in if I've killed off enough mines. Another very common thing. Again, with the theme of logical groupings. You know what goes really nicely with Dragoons? Observers! Modify the phase variance, damn it. Observers are really important to combo with uh, Dragoons because they can see the mines, obviously. But I remember when I, when I was a really mediocre Protoss player, I used to just ha I, I was just strict. I was like, every unit type must, ha must, must have its own different hotkeys. So I had this is two and this is one. So it'd be like one click, two click, one click, two click. It's actually just way easier to include it in the group. And then if you're like, oops, I hope there's not mines in there, you can walk this guy forward individually, just through box selection, and then do little smart moves like this. It's all about organization. So let's come back to this early game, mid game, late game sort of thing that Protoss has. Very often, in all the matchups, Protoss will have some cute thing and a little bit of army. This is the race that is really going to force you to think smartly about your unit organization. Terran, in a lot of ways, is pretty easy, right? You're, you're, going, you're going tanks and vultures. You're going marine, medic, and then eventually a whole bunch of tanks and vessels, right? Like, it, it's, it's pretty ordered how you're doing things. But when you're Protoss, you'll very often be against a Zerg, and you'll have a hot key group of Corsairs that need to be heavily microed throughout the entire game. You'll also have a funky little wall off at the front that has all sorts of holes in it because this matchup involves that. <laughs> so you'll want to keep those things focused. And nothing's incorrect here. I would just encourage you to smartly think about where you want these Corsairs. Because let's take the Protoss vs. Zerg matchup. These Corsairs will probably stay alive for a lot of the game. So you want to make certain you pick a hotkey for it. I like four. That's just going to be alive for a long time. Yeah, maybe I only have two zealots in control group one, and I have nothing in two and three. Well, in five minutes, I'm going to have one, two, and three as gateway units, and I still have control group four as my corsairs. Contrast this with if you are a... If you're someone who's just like, all right, I'm going to put control two on my Corsairs and one as my Zealots. This is going to work early game. Once you're mid game, what are you going to go? One, three, four is your gateway units and two is your Corsairs. I encourage you to try some shit out. 
play a full game or so with it, and then go, you know what, I don't like this. You know what, I don't like this at all. <laughs> and then adjust. Also super common, by the way, is to have scouting workers be on two and three. So you have one as your zealots, four as your corsairs, and then you have this probe doing funny business. I'll note something from the previous video. You're actually not moving your mouse that much in this when you're using these techniques. Like, no, notice how my mouse, if I slow down, my mouse, I have four here, one, one. This probe's moving. My mouse is still staying right about here in the middle of the screen. This is one of the nice things about hotkeys is that you, you technically are zooming around a lot, but you're not actually going crazy with your mouse hand going everywhere. Alright, back to hockey setups. So again, very common to have F2 as your main base, F3 as your expansion. Very common to have some mixture of units at the start, but uh, at 1, 2, 3, and 4. What do you want your shuttle and your reaver to be? You know I like to make it 4. Bam! I like to make it 4. See the consistency? See the consistency? Um, what are other useful hotkey techniques? Protoss has a lot of overlap with Terran, quite honestly. So, I mean, having five as your gateway, and then later on in the game, when you have just an absolute shitload of gateways up, you can just go back to the five. Damn, wish that power would come online sooner. Oh god, that gateway working looks so nice. Yeah, so this is five. Can easily just click through them. Be doing stuff. La 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 la. Five fives, easy, 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 easy. A thing that's very common against Zerg is this is five and this is six. So you go five. Z, six, six, Z, 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 Z. You have an extra hotkey for the spread. And this is, this is pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Like, five is this gateway. Six is this. Seven is the robo. Eight is the stargate. Now, what you might do is you might say, you know what, Sean, I have an idea. What if I always built my stargate nearby my gateways. So that way I could go 5-5 five, five, or 6-6 six, six, and just click on that. It is a good day to die. Totally great. Nothing wrong with that. Seems completely reasonable. Just keep testing and experimenting. What do I like to use 0 for when I'm Protoss? I really like things like observers that I might not be that worried about for long periods of time. But maybe I'm like, huh, I wonder what is happening in the top left. Is he taking an expansion? I can just go zero, click, click, and not have to go select it. I also like using zero on forges. It's really nice to be able to reach over in zero W. Be microing some stuff. Be microing some stuff. Zero W. Pretty straightforward. Let's round things up with... Um, Oh, I'll just note, late game with Protoss, it's virtually identical to late game with Terran. You're going to have many more keys focused on units, one, two, three, four, um, maybe even five and six. And then you're going to have some extra cutesy things. Maybe you have one, two, three, four as your units, and then five and six as an arbiter and a shuttle that you're using to drop her ass. Um, personally, late game is Protoss. What I do is I have one, two, three, four sometimes five being units six is my gateway seven is another cluster of gateways and then i have eight nine zero as arbiters and shuttles that have things and you might go jesus sean isn't that inconvenient to reach so far over and the answer is that like well i'm used to it, it just feels fine for me right now it's it does not feel that bad to go zero and move stuff around Let us go to the last race, the race that I play the most. The Zergies. 
Oh yeah, I can't close this. I can't. I have to be a computer. Oh, be Protoss. Now Zerg is a little weird because you don't really have clusters of anything. You don't have the advantage of being able to be like, here are where all my gateways are. Which does pose some issues. Let me let me hit myself with the operation qual here. So let's look at what's normal again for Zerg here. F2 is main base. F3. Oops. F3 is the expansion. Alright, super normal. No one's shocked. F4 will often be wherever an additional expansion is. AKA right here. Now, right away, you're noticing that this doesn't look unusual for Zerg to have this weird spread out of things. So how do you, how do you, what, what? Guys, there's a problem I want to tell you about and I'm stepping over on my own words. Okay, so this is F2 in our main. This is F3 in our expansion. This is F, F4 at our third base. The problem is how do we macro into the late game? We really just can't have one simple hotkey go here and build everything. So you actually do have to devote many of your hotkeys to hatcheries. This is the big thing to note with Zerg, is that you just have to do a lot of that shit. So I recommend starting at four or five and just going up with hatches. Five, six, seven, eight, five clicks, six click, seven click, eight click for rallies, five SZ, six SZ, seven SZ, eight SZ. This is the biggest difference between Zerg and the other two races, is this inability to have everything hotkeyed. Or the inability to have everything conveniently packed together so you don't need that many hotkeys. Although some principles do apply. This hatchery that's up in the corner. I'm going to use a nice trick. I'm going to build a lot of hatches up here. Maybe I have this as control zero, this hatch. And then I don't have any of these other hatcheries that I'm going to be building selected as any hotkeys. So if I want to macro, what will I do? I will maybe be over here with my Zerglings. And then I'll go 5SZ, 6SZ, 7SZ, 8 S, Z, and then I'll hit zero, zero, box, Z. So this is a very convenient method to have many additional hatcheries. You'll see essentially every single Zerg player doing this. They will just have a whole bunch of hatcheries grouped together so that way they can like go there. I really like the corner because I can use just the mouse. Like look, no keyboard. I just hold that middle mouse button and zip up to the top right corner and then just box Z, no problem, took care of it, boom. So we've talked, um, that's actually the main thing with hatchery macro compared to everything else. You just need to hit 5SZ, 6SZ, 7SZ a lot and then use either screen panning or 0, zero to like have a specific hotkey for clusters. And then you're off to a good start. The screen hotkeys for Zerg are especially critical when it comes to the management of drones. So for instance, we have three hatcheries here. I'm going to make some drones. 5SD, 6SD, 7SD. Now, what I want to do is I want to select F2, right click. And if I go here, I select, select, F3, right click. Very critical to use screen hotkeys in order to manage where drones are going. Because like, this is the hotkey that, this is the rally point that you want. You want all the stuff at the front. 
Alright, so I'm making drones everywhere. F2. Box. Shift. Select. Shift. Select. F4. Right click. Box these. Right click. Great! I used screen hotkeys to make sure all my drones were allocated properly. Now when it comes to specific stuff with units, it's no different than the other two. Really, we went over the big ones with hatches. I, I use four as my critical upgrade building, and later in the game I use zero as my critical upgrade building. If I'm building some hydralisks, let's go ahead and speed this puppy up. Oops, I slowed that puppy down. If I have some hydralisks, and I'm doing some stuff early on, like going for lurkers, then I will constantly do this, where I'll have three control groups of units. One, two, three. And I'll just look at four. I sometimes do this if I'm, like, going for a spire. I'll want to see what my spire production timing is like. You dick. Alright, so I'm, I'm doing this. Hockey spire is four. So I'm in this attack... Just checking for. And now, once again, I'm just playing some StarCraft, because I like to play StarCraft. Well, now these guys are clustered. I might lose this fight. Ugh. The Zerglings. Never do what I want you to do, huh? Attack, please. Wow. That was a close fight. Ah, rats. So, still able to use 4 to check. Um, I, I feel like, weirdly, Zerg hotkeys are almost way, 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 way easier to think about than everyone else. Because I, I frankly feel like you just have to hotkey all your hatches. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then 0 in the corner. For quick production. You just kind of have to do that. So you only have a small number of hotkeys. So, the big thing uh, is making sure you have clear organization. So, because Zerg has a pretty wide variety of unit types in the game, just thinking about where those lie. So, for instance, I tend to have Lurkers at 2, Mutalisks at 1, Lings is 3, and Lings is 4. This is my tendency. If I'm doing just mutiling, I won't have lurkers hotkeyed. I'll just have lings as one, two, and three. Excuse me, two, three, and four. Here's one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Where are you two? Get in here. I know other Zerg players that say, hey, my mutalists, because they're harassing, I want them as four. My mutalists are always four. And then I have Lings as 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. That's totally fine. Totally fine, reasonable thing to do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, I love Mutalist Micro. It's so satisfying. I always want to get it from the maximum range possible. Oh. And the way to do that is to hit the hold position button. Hitting it a little late. Oh, it's because he's there. Hold oh, position. Okay, I'm just starting to play StarCraft again. <laughs> the important thing is really organization. I'm going to dip a little bit into things that are unrelated to hotkeys, but I still feel like are related to hotkeys. Because Zerg, all of those hotkeys are eaten up with 5679. You just don't have a lot of stuff left over. So some cute things that I've encountered over the ages is if you have overlords with drop, I have these hotkey to zero, just so I can have control group one, two, three, and four staying active, doing interesting things, and then I can go check up on my overlords at any time. Cool. Also, in the ultra early game, I have my overlords is one and two, and my scouting drone is three, and my spawning pool is four. Really common. 
Nothing weird about it. But in order to deal with the fact that Zerg has so many units, spread your units out into groups of 12. So here's 12. Here's less than 12. Here's 12-ish. Here's some other things. Spread them back. So that way you can do single box click, single box click, go up here, single box click, single box click. And now these are the ones that you actually micro. Some easier big army control. And I can't stress enough that the number one thing to take away is use your whole span of 1 to 0 and just come up with an internal logic for what should be assigned to what. And I hope that the big takeaways are early, mid, and late game. How do I do things differently in there? And also, maybe I should hotkey upgraders. Maybe I should divvy my units more differently than I thought. How can I maybe have some overlaps, like Dragoons with Observers or Dragoons with Templar? Maybe I can use hotkeys to bounce my screen somewhere and do quicker production that way. How do I free up extra hotkeys so I have units without losing track of my organization? Late game, you don't have to build a lot of workers. Early game, you do. Huh, maybe I can free up my Nexus hotkeys and assign those to units later. That seems like a reasonable idea. Um, so that's it. That is your hotkey control keyboard lesson pair for the day. I am now going to eat some delicious Ethiopian food and I will see you Tuesday. We're gonna take a deeper look at some strategy stuffs uh, and the series will continue. Hope you guys had a great day and your homework is to continue to play, continue to get used to the game, just play some fun games. We're not going to do anything serious yet. We haven't even looked at 1v1 strategy. But make sure that you're starting to use a lot of these hotkey techniques to organize your base. That's how pros are able to play so quickly is because they're just going, oh, I have an idea. I want to build a bunch of stuff and send these units over there. And their fingers race across the keyboard to execute those two actions. Happen to be constituted of 18 smaller actions. But really it's just two simple chunks. Um, very easy to get high APM doing a small number of big tasks because the small individual subtasks, there's so many of them and you can do them so efficiently and cleanly. Um, I'm done. Goodbye. You're great. You're fantastic. You're handsome. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You're darling. You're great. You're excellent. Goodbye.